friends today we will uh, discuss on external laws the anatomy of external laws don't think it is so simple there are so many points and so many areas to be covered under this external laws which are very much important uh, in clinical uh, clinical practice this uh, external laws so for easy understanding i have superimposed on this on the uh, skull okay so this external laws is uh, actually it is a pyramid and it consists of an osteocartilaginous framework covered by muscles and skin okay so regarding the skin this thickness of the skin vary uh, over the uh, various parts so over the dorsum this is the dorsum uh, i have the procerus muscle for your understanding i kept it like that so you imagine uh, a skin layer over this or you palpate with your own nose so the skin over this dorsum and the side of the nose it is very thin and it is loosely adherent whereas towards the tip of the nose okay towards the tip of the nose and in the ala cartilages area it is very thick and adherent okay so it is thin over the dorsum and towards the side and towards the tip and towards the ala cartilage it is the skin is thick and adherent and this uh, skin over the tip of the nose and is contains numerous large sebaceous glands so the importance is that hypertrophy of the sebaceous glands of the nasal tip will lead to rhinophyma or the potato nose okay so this is uh, rhinophyma or the potato nose uh, which is glandular form of acne rosa say you can notice this uh, there is a pinkish lobulated mass uh, of the nasal tip giving a very ugly appearance this is main this mainly uh, affect the males past the middle age this is also the lateral view of uh, rhinophyma or the potato nose here you can see the uh, pinkish lobulated mass in the nasal tip so the treatment earlier was paring off the excess tissue with a sharp knife followed by skin grafting now the treatment of choice is carbon dioxide laser and uh, this is the vestibule of nose these two actually this is a skin lined area of the nose and uh, this is a dilated passage way from the external nares into the nasal fossa and it is limited by the limen nasae that is the superior part of the upper uh, lower lateral cartilage and the skin of this area uh, uh, bears hair so that is why vestibulitis acute vestibulitis is common in this area so this is a vestibule right so that is uh, regarding the skin covering coming to the muscles the muscles in man is actually not of much important they are they have only vestigial importance and all the muscles are supplied by facial nerve the main muscle of the nose is procerus okay this is one so this is originating from the fascia overlying the nasal bone actually this procerus is a continuation of frontalis muscle okay and procerus so this originate from the fascia overlying the nasal bone and also from the lateral nasal cartilage okay and this is the insertion i have, i am removing it from the insertion which is the inferior forehead right so this originate from the uh, fascia overlying the nasal bone and also from the lateral nasal cartilage and get insert to the uh, inferior forehead so what will be the action contraction contraction means this part is uh, contracted so what will happen this will depress the medial eyebrow and also wrinkles the skin over the superior dorsum so this muscle or procerus muscle is otherwise called depressor glabelli okay so i have removed the procerus next uh, comes is a depressor nasae septae where is it here see this is the depressor nasae septae this muscle okay so what is the origin and what is the insertion oh it's gone uh, it is between the alveolus this is the alveolus and this is the medial crest this is the alveolus and this is the medial crest so this is the medial crest of the uh, lower lateral cartilage so this 
depressor nasal septa muscle is between the medial crest and the alveolus and what will be the action if it contracts what will happen it will depress the septum and also it will depress the uh, nasal septum and also the tip of nose if the tip of nose is depressed what will happen this external nares will enlarge so flaring of the uh, nasal uh, external nares so expansion or flaring of the external nares will uh, happen okay next comes this muscle which is this this is the levator labia superioris alaic nasi levator labia superioris alaic nasi actually it has got two heads oh god yeah it has got two heads one head is from the frontal process of maxilla this is the frontal process of maxilla so one head arises from the frontal process of maxilla to the perichondrium of the lateral crest this is a lateral crest of lower lateral cartilage so from here from the frontal process of maxilla it comes and joins with the lateral process of the uh, perichondrium of the lateral crest of lower lateral cartilage and it has got another head also which arises from the frontal process of maxilla and coming to the alveolus so what will be the action the action is there in the muscle name okay levator labia so elevate the upper lip because it is from it comes and attaches to the alveolus okay so it elevate the upper lip so levator labia and alaic nasi dilates the nostril because it is attached to the uh, lateral crest of the lower lateral cartilage so when it contract it will uh, dilate the nostril so that is about the levator labia superioris alaic nasi and then uh, this muscle what is this one this is nasalis muscle okay nasalis nasalis has got a transverse part and also it has got an ala part under the transverse part okay so this transverse part is from the pyriform aperture after removing this i'll tell you what is the pyriform aperture so it is from the pyriform aperture on to the dorsum of the nose see okay actually this is the uh, transverse part of nasalis from the pyriform aperture it goes to the dorsum of the nose and this will help the procerus muscle for contracting the nasal aperture okay and i am removing the transverse part ah yeah behind that you can see the alar part see there comes the alar part it actually arises from the maxilla to the ala cartilage okay from the maxilla to the ala cartilage it helps in shortening and uh, dilating the nostril so actually it assists in flaring of the nose so which all muscles will help the flaring of this one is an alar part of this nasalis muscle another one is depressor here uh, depressor uh, nasal septae and also this levator labia superioris alaic nasi okay so these are uh, these are the muscles main four muscles attached to the external nose and they are supplied by the facial nerve now we can go to and removing the lr part also okay now we can go to the supporting framework that is a bony skeleton uh, and also a cartilaginous framework so regarding the bony skeleton it has got two nasal bones on both side you can see it here isn't it okay and uh, one more frontal process of the maxilla this is the maxilla and uh, this is the frontal process of the maxilla see this is the uh, nasal bone and this is the frontal process of maxilla and also one another contribution is from the nasal part of the frontal bone see so the bony skeleton of the nose is by three bones one is obviously the nasal bone and another one is by the frontal process of the maxilla and the third is by the nasal part of the frontal bone okay and our important uh, area of interest is the nasal bone these two so this two nasal bone unite with each other in the midline have you got any doubt no they unite in the midline and with the frontal bone superiorly at the naso frontal suture and laterally there is one more suture here is a naso maxillary suture with the frontal process of maxilla so nasal bone naso maxillary suture with frontal process of maxilla 
and a nasofrontal suture with superiorly with the frontal bone okay and one important thing you have to remember is that this is grooved you can see grooving here see here also there are so many grooves isn't it so this is grooved by adjacent neurovascular bundle and this produces radio lucencies so one common um, fault or a misdiagnosis you make is you confuse this uh, radio lucencies of the neurovascular bundle with that of the uh, fracture of nasal bone in x-ray so that should be avoided okay so that is why always if you are taking an x-ray in a fracture nasal bone always correlate the x-ray finding with the clinical finding if there is a fracture of nasal bone there should be tenderness and uh, the root of nose along with crepitation and if it is not present there and if you are getting a uh, doubtful uh, fracture you have to conf uh, confirm it you should not misdiagnose a fracture nasal bone with the uh, radiolucencies of the neurovascular bundle okay uh, this cartilage is mainly an upper lateral cartilage and a lower lateral cartilage okay these two cartilage and actually this is not the cartilage but this is a fibro uh, uh, representation for the uh, areola tissue okay and there are only two type uh, two cartilages in the nose and these are hyaline cartilages and this will ossify also and why this cartilage cartilage will prevent the collapse of vestibule on inspiration okay it to prevent the collapse of vestibule on inspiration and i don't know whether this owner of the skull had a beautiful nose or no, no or not anyway this molding is for a it's not so good good to see okay anyway this is to for you to understand this is the upper lateral cartilage actually it is a triangular flat expansion on sideways you can see this see it is triangular and it is flat expansion it lies inferior to the nasal bone where is the nasal bone actually it comes inferior this is inferior to the nasal bone it should be inferior and uh, ideally this should go beneath the nasal bone okay it should go beneath the nasal bone this part if it is so this will collapse that is why i made like that okay you just understand it is a, a flat uh, triangular cartilage lying inferior to the nasal bone actually it is overlapped by the nasal bone and the medial aspect is here i have made a see ha ah, this is nice i think this is more beautiful than that you can uh, imagine the uh, shape also it is actually triangular there are two cartilages and the midline they are uh, connecting with the septum okay midline it is coming and connecting with the nasal septum and uh, two cartilages upper lateral cartilages which are triangular also okay and uh, this is the this yellow is the uh, lower lateral cartilage it forms the lower third of nose and between the uh, upper lateral cartilage and the lower lateral cartilage there is a groove see it is a groove and it is called the lyman nasi lyman nasi and this is site of intercartilaginous incision in case of rhinoplasty so between the upper lateral cartilage and the lower lateral cartilage comes the lyman nasi which is a site of intercartilaginous incision one another important um, site is k area or the keystone area here comes it what is that k area or the keystone area it the mid portion of the nose where the lower part of nasal bone overlaps the superior part of the upper lateral cartilage here comes it this is a superior part of the upper lateral cartilage and uh, here comes the lower part of nasal bone so this part where the lower part of nasal bone overlaps the upper part of mid portion of the upper lateral cartilage and this is called the k area or the keystone area of the nose and uh, this is the lower lateral cartilage this forms the lower this forms the lower third of nose and i have made a 
for your information i have made this this is uh, actually this is the lower lateral cartilage it has got a medial crest and it has got a lateral crest okay and this medial crest and the lateral crest will come and join at the dome which is which corresponds to the tip of nose here comes it okay here you can see the medial crest and the lateral crest join at the dome of nose which forms a tip if the dome is beautiful then you will get a very sharp and pointed tip of nose and this medial crest is loosely attached to each other in the midline here okay and that forms a contribute to the columella of nose which one this part this this is a columella okay this is a columella this is a columella and this lies uh, in front of the uh, uh, quadrilateral cartilage okay the part of septum running between the tip of nose the part of septum running between the tip of nose and the philtrum is called the columella and that is contributed by the medial crust of the uh, lower lateral cartilage and one another thing you have to understand that of this uh, see this is a medial crest and this is a lateral crest so this lateral crest of the lower lateral cartilage will not follow the uh, entire nostril and it stops somewhere uh, anterior and the rest is formed by the blue, uh, areola fibro fatty tissue okay and because this uh, lower lateral lower uh, lateral crest of the lower lateral cartilage does not follow the entire nostril what happen the area towards the base of the nose there comes an area where the skin of the vestibule is directly applied skin of the vestibule here see you can see it here the skin of the vestibule there is no cartilage here so the skin of this vestibule will be directly uh, applied to the covering skin of this uh, of the nose and here there is only here there is a covering skin of the nose and here there is the Uh, skin of the vestibule so in between there is only a some loose areola tissue so this area is a soft triangle of uh, converse okay soft triangle of converse what is the importance of this any violation of this area during surgery can lead to scarring puckering of the skin and post operative notching which is difficult to uh, correct so you should be very uh, careful while uh, approaching or incising this areas that is a soft triangle of converse okay and on removing the uh, cartilage i am removing the upper lateral cartilage and the lower lateral cartilage now we can see the piriform aperture okay this is a piriform aperture and this is the uh, bony septum okay part of bony septum uh, nasal septum so this is a piriform aperture what are the boundaries of piriform aperture below and laterally below and laterally it is bounded by maxilla here and above by the nasal bone right so below and laterally there is a maxilla and above there is a nasal bone and the anterior nasal spine this is anterior nasal spine and this lies in the middle of the inferior border and this can be up to 15 cm in length and it is related superiorly to the andro inferior free end of the septal cartilage you can see this this bony septum is formed by the what all structures that we can uh, discuss along with the nasal septum anatomy of nasal septum and that is piriform aperture so we discussed about the anatomy of nasal bone uh, anatomy of external nose starting from skin up to the piriform aperture okay